Welcome to the Think Yourself Healthy podcast, where we challenge you to think differently about your approach to health and wellness. My name is Heather Duranja, and I'm excited to be here with you to take you on the journey from surviving to thriving. Hey, beautiful souls. On today's episode of Think Yourself Healthy, I have a special twist to the show. I have a co-host. My co-host is Dario Russell G. He is a Southern Italian native, songwriter, musician, food restaurant consultant, and he is a healing coach who specializes in helping people define their soul gifts so that they can live their life purpose for their greatest good and the collective. So Dario. Hello there. Hello. So I'm really excited. This is like a a really special treat for me and something that we're going to start doing more of. Many of you know that um, I help facilitate healing ceremonies and Dario is one of the individuals along with Alyssa and Taylor who help us pull these amazing events off. And so we have actually started a business of our own called Light Revival, and we are going to be um, doing more healing ceremonies as well as evolving into retreats. And then we have a big, big plan of purchasing property and opening up our own healing center. So that's, that is our goal. And so today we just kind of wanted to talk to you, share a little bit about who Dario is, what our vision is for our future and um, all of the good things. So Dario, thank you so much for being my co-host today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So tell the audience a little bit about you. Okay. So um, originally from South Italy, uh, if you're wondering where it's called, the region is called Puglia. It's the heel of the boot. Uh, the city is called Brindisi. It's a little uh, sea town. And um, yeah, I moved here in the United States uh, seven years ago. Still feels like yesterday. Yes. And uh, how I got here was, uh, it was a strange a strange, strange set of events that brought me here, but it all makes sense now. And I'm glad that it happened. Uh, Once I moved here, uh, it was not easy. Uh, I had to start everything from scratch, uh, from getting a driver's license (laughs) to finding a job and everything. But uh, yeah, uh, as uh, Heather said, I started with, uh, you know, with uh, some jobs to support my music. I was always a songwriter and a musician. Uh, That's one of my passions. And Tell them where they can find you and listen to your uh, music. Yeah, so if you want to listen to my music, uh, you can go on my Instagram. That is Dario Russell G. And you can click the link in the bio. That's going to bring me to bring you to uh, my Spotify and YouTube channels in case you don't have a Spotify. And you can listen to uh, two albums and one single. I have a lot in the making, too, as well. And hopefully it's going to come out soon. Uh, yeah, so that's the music side of it. And there's some, know. there's so many commonalities between, you know, Dario. I'd, we're getting ready to celebrate our group's one year anniversary, which is really, really exciting. Almost a year ago, we were all brought together and, um, it was honestly a truly life changing experience. When you find your people, when you find your tribe, when you find your, your soul, your soul family, you know it, you feel it at the core of your being, like inside your cells, they start tingling and you just know you, there's no denying it. But it didn't happen right away. You want to tell them what was the first impression when we met? Yeah, the first impression (laughs) were like, who the fuck are these people and why are they here? (laughs) I was totally like, Alyssa and I were like, oh my gosh, like other humans are right here now. Yeah, yeah. And then at the end of the... We were worried that what, like they were going to kill our vibe and we were going to kill their yeah. vibe. And lo and behold, Alyssa, which is his fiance, um, and then you guys, many of you already know who Taylor is. Um, Taylor and I 
we were like, who are these people and why are they here? And then with, by the, by the end of the weekend, we like fell in love yeah. with each other and knew that our lives were forever changed in the most amazing, beautiful way. Yeah. And it happened at the right time too. Oh uh, yeah. We, we, we supported each other doing last year. So. Yeah, I cannot even imagine having to go through 2020 without you guys. Yeah, same, like, same seriously, uh, I don't it, know was it was a blessing. <laughs> it was a blessing. Such a blessing. That's how I know it wasn't. Nothing is. Nothing happens by chance. Everything is calculated. The universe brings us what we need and who we need at the right time. Absolutely, and it's kind of funny because the weekend that we met, um, after we spoke about it later, both of us kind of had a lot of both of our parties, him and Alyssa, myself and Ter uh, Taylor, had a lot of resistance about, about this weekend and, and going to this event that we all attended. And, and then in the end, it was literally the most beautiful yeah. thing. And we both, both parties checked in with their intuition and said, you know, is this for my greatest good? Am mm -hmm. I supposed to go do this and have this experience? And we both got confirmation, do it, go. So, we have learned to grow and embrace each other and the uh, downloads, the, the callings, the intuition that we each um, give and we help one another support that, which is truly amazing. I know a lot of people um, over this last year have had many different experiences in terms of their own awakening or their own spiritual awakening. And so, for me personally and Taylor personally, I know that we could not have gone through this experience without Dario and Alyssa because they literally have been such a huge support when we're vibing low, when we're purging and having, you know, really emotional moments and a lot of doubt and uncertainty that creep in. Dario and Alyssa are there to bring us up and vice versa. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, collective work it is. and we check in with each other too so that's a that's a really good thing so absolutely if somebody's feeling something we just like text the text, other yeah, call so we have like our chat it's like so how are you guys feeling and we we see what's going on and it's kind of having your personal uh news channel yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's we, we, we all our, our intuition is all on point so we check in with each other and we figure out what's happening in the collective things absolutely our unity yeah so. absolutely and the beautiful thing is is that because we have had such an immense amount of support from one another it's truly allowed us to embrace this journey that we've been on over this last year and and really help to cultivate the um the gifts the aspects of us that are being bring it all online yeah, it's like, like coming back it to online. life yeah. yeah reconnecting with our true power our true divine power and becoming sovereign again and understanding that we are not just this you know limited body and everything we come from we are all connected with each other and we we come from a very very powerful source absolutely and i'm not talking about it in a religious way of course you know well, let's, well, let's actually do to kind of talk a little bit about mm. spirituality. I think there's a lot of misconception or misunderstanding of mm -hmm. spirituality. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. One of my favorite characteristics of Dario is his diverse amount of knowledge when it comes to religion and, and spirituality. He truly has a very vast understanding of all of the different concepts and the different religions and the commonalities between them all. Do you want to talk to them a little bit about um, how, you, how yeah, you got there? Yeah. So how I got there, it's uh, where it got me to now. Yeah. That what got yeah. me here at this moment is all the traumas and all the stories I have to go through growing up. So, uh, of course, you don't know. I, I was grown. Uh, I grew up in Italy, and everybody thinks, "Oh, so he's a Catholic." No, I come from a Jewish background, and I was the only Jew with my mom and my sister because my father is not Jewish, but he was really respectful and is actually really connected to Judaism. And we were the only Jews in the town, so I had to go through the usual anti-Semitism that was surrounding us. People didn't even know what a Jewish person was they were like oh 
wait, you're Jewish? Uh, so where's your nose? Where the long hair, the long curlies? Why are you not dressed in black? So stories. Yeah, all those stories, all those, you know, uh, labels that people had. And it's not their fault. You know, they never, <laughs> they never had a chance to meet one until they met me. And so based on that, I have to, I have to go through all of that. Um, and in, like in every religion, uh, there's a lot of limitations and uh, they, they, at least with my experience, I always gonna, I'm always going to talk based on my experience because maybe somebody else had a beautiful experience and stuff like that. But in my experience, in any religion, I, I experienced the Catholic religion, the Christian religion, the Jewish religion, I even, uh, experienced the Greek Orthodox religion because I grew, I, I, part of me, part of my time in life, uh, I lived in Greece too. So that was part of my culture growing up. And there was always this guilt that you have to have in religion. You always have to have this shame and God is watching you and he's judging you. And there's this fear of God. And, and I got it like, I was like, wait, why do I have to be fear of God. If God is love, right? Mm -hmm. God loves me. God created me. I mean, I didn't chose to be here. Right. Part of me made my soul decided, but who created my soul? Where does my soul come from? So all these questions brought me to the point where like, you know, it, it shouldn't be about that. So I got to study the Torah on my own. And that is what people usually call the Old Testament or the original Bible, uh, the, the old version. And I got to study the Catholic one for some time because I how do you call it here? After school, they used to send me to church. Right. Catechism. So, yeah. Well, I, I grew that's up. That's what we call it. I grew up and I was raised a Catholic. And so prior to getting enrolled in Catholic school full time, when I got into sixth grade, I had to go to what was called PSR, which okay. was public school of religion. So it was okay, for all of the kids yeah. that didn't have a Catholic in school experience. We would have to go one or two nights a week. I can't remember. Um, to this PSR mm -hmm. class where okay, they would so, teach us yeah. about the Bible and, so, and all of okay. the, you know, Ten Commandments and all of the things. So basically it was that. It was like at eight years old in Italy, at least back in the days, in elementary school, uh, you were assigned, like they would assign you to this course that had nothing to do with school. You would go to the, your local church mm -hmm. and you would be in a class with people. And I learned that too. I learned, uh, you know, all the, the different size of religions let's say but long story short i had to go through catholic religion jewish religion greek orthodox religion so i studied on my own a little bit of uh uh the muslim religion too just because i was curious but uh that brought me to ask a lot of questions and there it what the difference between religion and spirituality to make it uh short the difference is like spirituality is always it's believing in, at least on my side, how the way I would explain it is believing in energy. Mm -hmm. Everything starts, everything is energy. Energy cannot be uh, destroyed. Created uh, or destroyed. Or created. It's always there. So that is what I call God or source or spirit or prime creator. It's the core of what energy Existence. is. Existence. It's like in Life. Star Wars. Life. The force. Yeah. The force. The it's force. the force. It's the yes. Force. So funny, I have to just share with you guys really quick. Um, I watched, you know, I grew up in the late 70s, early 80s. And of course, that's when Star Wars was really popular. And I watched all of that. And then after I meet Dario, you know, we're, ta we're having all of these conversations about energy and life force and spirituality. And he's constantly referencing Star Wars. He's like, you got to go back and watch Star Wars. Mm -hmm. So a couple weeks ago, Taylor and I decided that we were going to have a Star Wars binge and we watched all nine Star Wars episodes in the reverse order. And it was astonishing because I was like, holy shit, literally, they are like yeah. telling you all of the secrets yeah. of life. They yeah. literally lay it all out for you. In a, <laughs> and it's like, how did I, how did we not yeah. understand this? It's from the politics to the spirituality to the energy thing how everything is interconnected and i always like i remember like watch star wars yeah they, they, that's what they told us yeah like, with, with, yoda, like, yoda like, <laughs> Come on. With, with the mess that was happening in the united states the and, the politics and, and the republic it was like uh they talked about that in episode one two three of star wars go watch it yeah wars and everything i was like he's full of shit 
And then I watched it and I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe yeah. it. It's so simple. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's really a lot simpler than what we humans like to try and create all this complexity and, and make things so difficult. But the reality is spirituality for me is my connection with the creator, with the life force that allows for my soul to be able to show up in a way that is living its purpose, serving my mission to help others and to help others cultivate their own soul purpose. Yeah, reconnecting. I, 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 it's like everybody is divine. Everybody comes from the same source, even what they call darkness, you know, and everything. Once upon a time, it came from the same source, like mm -hmm. from God, and then it just decided to well, go rogue, let's say. Yeah. And then they forgot it. And what, how spirit, God, source, prime creator, however you want to call him, you can call him Coca Cola if you want. I don't care. You know, as long as your intention is pure, as the intention connects you to that, uh, he doesn't force you to do anything. If he, like, we have free will. So, Let's say one day I decide to go against uh, my intuition and my our intuition always guides us to do the right thing for our greatest and highest of good. And I say, you know what? I'm going to go do that anyway. And we're free to do it. Mm -hmm. And God is going to say, okay, do it. And this is God. Like the, the God is always going to be here. And if you get further and further away, he's going to let you go further and further away. And But he's not going to bug you. It's right. like, you know, if you want me, you know where to find me. Mm -hmm. And when we go back to him, he's always there. And he, she, I, I don't, don't take me literal. Uh, I don't know how to call it. 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 Yeah. It, it is always there. The light the is light. always shining. Light, the light, the light is yeah. always with like us. God, like the highest and holiest frequency of love and light. That's God. And uh, he has many names. Uh, he's always there. I mean, that energy is always there if you want to connect to it. So it's like Heather was saying, our mission is to let people uh, be aware that they are divine, they are sovereign, and their true potential is always there. They, we just block it with our, all our limitations, all our stories that the system, uh, and when I say the system, I'm talking about the school, our parents, uh, our friends, uh, the, you know, the television too, and it, they teach us how to be in lack how to be in fear, how to judge ourselves and yep. how to shame ourselves and how to not listen to our intuition. Because if you're listening to your intuition, that can be a voice in your head or a gut feeling. It's stupid and you're crazy and you need meds and all yes. that stuff. We have all the tools to be, I don't want to say perfect, but close to that. Yeah. Like we have all the tools to, to travel in life. To go through life in a very loving and joyful way. Yes, and it's easier. Yesterday, so so I have to uh, I have to state this. So we had an amazing day yesterday. The four of us went and did paintball. It was really awesome. And then we went and had dinner. And after dinner, I was driving home, and a Pink Floyd song came on, and I was listening to the lyrics. And I feel like Source for me really um, sends me messages through music. I feel like that's one of the way that, you know, my spirit guides, source, the divine power, whatever I want to, my intuition, whatever, speaks to me through, through music. And I was listening to the lyrics in the song and it was talking about, we don't need no education. And it was going on and on. And I was listening to these lyrics and I'm thinking, oh shit, oh my God, I understand what they're saying. What they're saying is we already have everything we need. We just have to remember. We, we have everything we need within. And unfortunately, we have all of these systems, our educational systems, the medical systems, the religious systems, that are defining, telling us what we're supposed to be, how we're supposed to think. And as a result of that, and I know for myself with my own personal experience being raised Catholic, it didn't feel right. It did not align with me, especially when I was going through like my dietetics program and I'm learning all of these things. Um, that are being taught that are USDA and FDA guidelines. And I'm going, no, no, that does not feel right. That's no, that is not the way I'm supposed to be guiding people to eat better and eat healthier. That's not what is going to cure their disease. 
but I knew I had to just go through the motions so that I could receive the licensure and be able to practice freely based upon the evidence that's out there that I support, which usually comes from the UK, has nothing to do with yeah, anything sure. that's available here in the US. It's, it's very difficult and to that find. Brings us to another other yeah. one. Maybe yeah. we'll talk about it. Later no, definitely. We will why talk about it comes from the UK. Yeah. So, you know, and, and these are all of the reasons why I'm so endear, like just have so much endearment towards um, Dario and his friendship and his guidance because. He has helped enlightened me in so many ways on the difference in food policies in Europe versus the United States, being that his specialty is um, he's a food consultant. And so he helps work with all of the restaurants in Southern California, all of the Italian restaurants. He helps provide them the products that they're using and preparing meals. And it's amazing to me what is allowed here in the U.S. versus oh, yeah. what is allowed in... Let's use the, the usual example that yeah. we, we talk yeah. about it all the time, but I don't know if you guys know, the perfect example is canola oil. Yes. Canola, I didn't even know what canola was until I moved here. I was like, what is it? Nobody, and the, this is the funny thing. I used to ask U.S. citizens that were born here and raised here, and they were like, what is canola? And they didn't even know the answer. Like, I think it's a plant. They yeah. would say, I think. I was like, how can you think? It's and, So it's derived from the rapeseed plant. Yeah, but it's chemically altered altered in labs. That's the only way you can get the oil from yeah. it. And the reason why I didn't know about this before moving here is because it is banned in Europe, at least in Italy for sure. It, you can't use it. It's uh, cancerous for you. It's super bad. And if you really want to use it, they use it to lube uh, engines. Machinery. Back. Yeah. Machinery. machinery. Did you hear in, that, in you Europe. guys? But here, it's okay to eat. Yeah, but you know what? If we think about it, here in the United States, especially when we think about the way that our medical system treats us, they do treat us like we're a machine. Mm -hmm. They don't look at the whole. They treat us as if we are, you know, individual pieces of machinery that have to be that individual piece fixed and we're not looking at the whole. So it would yeah. make sense why yeah. we would be allowed to have canola oil added to almost every yeah. single refined processed food. You'll find it in your salad dressings. Everywhere. You'll find it in any kind of like bread, baked product, crackers. Um, oh my gosh, it's and, in everything. And, everything. and like you were saying, why do they let this, why is it allowed here? Like Heather was saying, they see us as machines and to fix they they don't they don't see us as machines like i i, I love my car you know i i know I'm, i use it that's my job without my that's my office right so i especially here <laughs> yeah, in southern california exactly. oh my you appreciated quarantine yeah <laughs> <laughs> so my i keep my car i maintain my car so i don't have to fix it Right. And the system is not built to maintain us no. in a healthy state of mind of body and emotional it's it's the system that is built to fix the problem not solve it before it's there or maintaining a healthy well i don't even know if it's necessarily fix i think it's more about um just putting a band-aid over symptoms yeah. well they want to wait for you to be uh to have a sickness or something so then oh okay we know how to fix that symptom right. well, how can we avoid that sickness? How can somebody not get to that point? Right. That's what the system is not doing. Right. And that's what we're trying to let people, to help, yeah. we're trying to let people know, hey, there's a lifestyle, there's a way of life where you don't need to get to that point where your kidneys are failing or you have to become a di Right. you have to have diabetes or anything like that. If, and it's nobody's fault because as we say, it's the system is not built like that, but we're trying to fix that, telling people, hey, you can avoid to get, you can not get to that state. Right. Well, I can this. use myself as an example. You know, at 18 years old, when I got diagnosed with this kidney disease, my doctors told me I had two options. It was either dialysis or transplant within five years. That's what my prognosis was looking like. And they told me that there was nothing, zero I could do to fix, fix, help, support, minimize there was nothing i could do my only choices were dialysis or transplant within five years and for some reason there was this feeling within me that said mm, 
I can't accept that as my truth. I can't intuition. accept that. That's the intuition. It, yeah, it was That's my intuition, intuition. But back then, I didn't know what the fuck intuition was. Absolutely not. And so for me, I knew there was this feeling and I just could not accept that that was going to be my reality. And that's when I chose to empower myself and, and go out and seek and try to find things that I could help support how I was feeling. And that's where my, my passion for, you know, research began and really understanding that we do have options. Unfortunately, when, when we're born here in the U S we kind of have this, um, we're born with this false sense of security that we can trust everything that is being told to us, everything that we're being taught, every, you know, I, I tell people all the time, I was just having a conversation with a group of people on Friday and I was telling them that most medical doctors have less than six hours, six hours total of nutrition education throughout their entire process of becoming a doctor. And it's, it's fascinating to me because the doctors are the very first people that they're turning to, to seek advice on what do I eat? What do I do? How do I make this better? And most of the time they're being told there's nothing you can do. Diet's not going to, you know, impact and, and, and this. Guess what, guess what we do every day? We eat. We eat we every eat day. Every day. And that's the, the common subject, thread. Yeah. The subject that they don't teach the doctor. That should be the first thing. Right? And Tell people what happened when once you took this stuff on your own. Yeah. So, That's you know, amazing. when I decided that there had to be another way that I couldn't accept that diagnosis and prognosis as my truth, I started changing my diet. And as I started changing my diet, all of a sudden the depression and the anxiety I had suffered with since I was 11 years old dissipated. All of a sudden I had energy. I was like, wait, what is energy? They started diagnosing me as anemic very, very young. I don't even remember how young. And, and then that led to me wanting to actually move my body like go mm -hmm. out and exercise. And I remember getting a gym membership and, and then the more I got active and was out in nature and playing with my children, the, the more joy I felt, the happier I felt. Moving energy. I was moving, moving energy. energy. Of course, I had no idea and, of and any of this. Bringing in good energy too, because food has energy. Yes. And Ooh, this, let's talk yeah. about that. So, so uh, let's close the canola thing. So okay. yeah, basically canola is in everything. And why is it used over here? This is the system that we are trusting. Yeah. So canola is the cheapest oil that you can buy, even though it's processed in the lab and everything, and it should cost more. And well, the, well, real quick, we need to also point out that in the 1960s, when the farming bill was changed, they made it so that there were five specific crops that could be grown in excess, like major quantities. And then they were um, these five crops that started that it's rice, it's cotton, it's soy, it's um, um, wheat. And I can't think of the other one. Potato? It, no, it's <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll list them. I'll list them for you guys in the show notes. But anyway, um, when this happened, we started growing these crops at excessive amounts, which allowed for the government to pay farmers to incentivize them to grow these specific crops. And then in return, because they were growing these crops in such large quantities, they could sell the ingredients to food manufacturers at a very, very low cost. And that's how high fructose corn syrup came about. High fructose, high fructose corn syrup corn. is derived. Der oh, it's corn, it's yeah, corn. duh, <laughs> fuck, it's corn. <laughs> Um, anyway, high fructose corn syrup is it's a derivative of corn. It's again, scientifically altered in mm -hmm. a lab. And the thing is with high fructose corn syrup, it cannot be metabolized in the small intestine. It must go to the liver. It has to go to the liver so that it can start breaking down the fructose in the liver. And majority of these, these scientifically altered food ingredients that we're consuming here in the US on a daily basis, multiple times a day through our refined processed convenient foods, as well as our fast foods, and even the stuff that you know we spend a lot of money on to go out to restaurants and eat, they're using these ingredients yeah. 
and they all have to go to the liver in order to start breaking them down and metabolizing them. Then if you take in recreational drugs and alcohol use, and then all of the other toxins that we're exposed through, through the containers that our foods are being stored in, to the bottles that we're drinking out of, the lotions and hygiene products that we're putting on our body. <laughs> I know, I mean, it's just absolutely insane. It's, it's, the reality yeah. is the liver can't keep up. The liver cannot stay on top of all of the jobs that it needs to do. And so it starts to diminish. You know, we start, we don't get enough vitamins and minerals from these specific foods. These things are removed. Their natural forms are removed yeah, in the processing. Yeah. And then they enrich them with, um, they enrich the vitamins and minerals with synthetic forms, which again, most of us have issues with being able to methylate those forms of vitamins and minerals, and then they can start to, you know, like folic acid. Folic acid is one of the um, most fortified ingredients, and our bodies, most people have difficulty methylating folic acid and turning it into the form that our body can absorb, which is folate. And therefore, one of the byproducts of that is increased histamine levels. Well, guess what? Histamine is one of the causes for cardiovascular mm. disease. And we wonder why we have, you know, uh, epidemic around cardiovascular disease, as well as diabetes, um, high blood pressure, obesity. It's all linked. It's mm -hmm. all correlated. It's all a chain. Yeah, it's, it's. So if you don't want to use canola oil, you can use sunflower oil. That's, that's what we use in Italy to fry. To fry. Deep fry, deep fry. Because if not, we use olive oil for everything at a medium flame. It shouldn't burn because the olive oil is like, it's not meant to be used for frying because it burns. So that Right, it doesn't have so as toxic, high of a heat. If you have a little bit more patience and you have a pan, just put a medium low heat and you can fry any. I, I fried calamari with olive oil and it takes a little bit longer to do it in a pan and you know lower flame, but... Well, another amazing. option could be... Um, coconut oil however a lot of people do not because coconut oil has one of the higher um, heating temperatures yeah, where it doesn't anything. break down and become rancid but a lot of people don't like the flavor yeah, of exactly. coconut Depends so if that. that's the case if you don't like the flavor of coconut then go and get the refined coconut which is where they just remove the ammonia that flavoring from the actual oil and that's another Another option for you guys mm -hmm. as well. What's the difference between regular olive oil and extra virgin olive oil? So extra virgin olive oil is the first batch. It's the fresh batch that um, you technically, you know, take when the olives are ripe and everything, uh, take them off and you put them in the press. Back in the days, you used to uh, mash them up with uh, stones. Nowadays, they don't do it anymore or, you know, majority they don't do it. It's all... Uh, in factories and then these big huge uh, metal i don't know how you call them containers let's yeah call them like that but uh extra virgin olive oil is the first uh fresh press so when they press it the first time cold press so everything that comes out from the olive that's the extra virgin olive oil okay um so you know, is that gonna have the is that gonna have like the highest amount of antioxidants and yeah omega that's, that's in the it? best okay that's the most expensive and that's what's healthy actually you can use it for your skin you can you know drink a little bit a day you want to drink too much if not you go poop right. but uh if, <laughs> if you need to go poop drink olive oil. yeah so <laughs> for all of you which most americans are suffering with constipation take a couple tablespoons of oh, yeah. extra virgin olive oil and you will have relief mm -hmm. right away yeah, perfect <laughs> but uh and that's the extra virgin olive oil and what uh, olive oil is different than extra virgin it's Let's say it's the ex olive oil never goes bad, but after a year, usually uh, the sediments of the olives that stay, that are in the extra virgin start going at the bottom of the bottle or the containers. So what they do, they take that extra virgin and go, they throw it in a, a hot process where it goes through a filter. So that becomes normal olive oil. So mm -hmm. it loses the word virgin because it's not a first press anymore. Okay. It's not fresh. So it then ultimately it would lose some of that nutrient value. It's always good. It's just a less fancier. Yeah. It, yeah. It, because it goes through a warm uh, filtering yeah. and it gets uh, rid of the little sediments that mm -hmm. I don't mind. I don't care. Right. Uh, but that's, that, that's what makes it olive oil and it's from the year before. So it gets cheaper. It's not uh, bad for you. It's actually always good. It's just cheaper because of mm -hmm. that. And what you don't want to 
consume is pomace oil. Palm oil. Pomace. What's pomace? There, so what uh, remains from the olive after you press it, it's all oh, the skins it and would everything. Oh, because have all that arsenic in it. And toxins and everything. Yeah. Because you don't want to, you can't eat right. olive. Right, right. It's fresh. So that, that was the, what they make pomace oil. <gasps> that they, some people, you know, move it as olive oil, but it's not. And that is banned in Italy too. Oh, shit. So that is used. See, learning things. something new every day. And here, there are restaurants that use it. And why do restaurants use it? Because they're put in a position where everything, these products are cheaper. A canola oil is way cheaper than uh, sunflower oil, oil. And pomace oil is way cheaper than extra virgin olive oil. And guess what? We're not even getting real extra virgin olive oil here in the States because there's not even enough for Italy. So Italy wow. keeps its batch. And what we're getting, if we're lucky, we're getting uh, basically... Uh, olives from the Mediterranean territory. And if it, they're like, uh, you know, if they're honest and everything, it's the first press of all those olives that are not bad. It's just a okay. different type of olive. Or if you really want to go safe, uh, get extra virgin olive oil from California. It's going to be a different taste. It's going to be a little bit more bitter because the trees here. And that, are, those are all grown up north, right? Yeah. Yeah. But the, the trees are in, are uh, young. Okay. That's why the olives still are, developing the taste and it's different than Italian extra virgin olive oil because we have olive trees especially from where I'm from Puglia mm -hmm. that are older than Jesus you know or Yeshua whatever you want to call them <laughs> they are like we have trees that are 5,000 years old wow. 4,000 and the taste of that olive oil is amazing and wow. growing up they used to like give it to us and it was nice and foggy and it's actually spicy. One of the things that Dario and I kind of joke and laugh around about and it's really not a funny matter, but in Italy, they've got a lot of really screwed up things that happen with their, you know, their government and the way yeah. that things are happening. But the one thing that the government yeah. will not allow is you do not fuck with their food. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so strange. You know, we have, I left Italy because of the government, you know, my dad and I used to have a, my dad actually had a business for 30 years. I was working with him and we have to close it. And that's the reason, one of the reasons that have brought me to the U.S. And the government just was pounding us from behind with taxes. It's like 60% of what you make. The electric bill, it was like, at home, was like 300 euro. Instead of like here, it's like $30, $50. Gas price is like $8 a gallon. Uh, so it's really hard to make a living over there if you want to do it in a legit way. Mm -hmm. Because then it, it, Italians are good at finding. So this loopholes. is why we have the mafia. Yeah, well, the mafia, <laughs> the government is the mafia. The mafia and the government are all the are same thing. The same. They're all the same thing in the Vatican and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and I, people are gonna get triggered when they hear that, but that's the reality of it, and most Italians know that. So the government is totally corrupted. Uh, it's people don't believe it, but it's the Communist Party that took over, and they they took the borders off. All these people came. To Italy without any uh, controls or anything. And I lived in from Rome to Bologna to Padova or down south. Down south doesn't happen that much because we know we we defend ourselves in a mm -hmm. little town. You know, like they said, the mafia and everything. If people come and start screwing with us, you know, if the immigrants come and they start robbing houses, raping our ladies and stuff like that, mm -hmm. we'll do something. Right. Yeah. Before the police does something. So that's kind of a good thing but up north there is not that there's not that community so they do whatever the heck they want i remember riding the night bus in rome at two o'clock and not i, I don't want to i'm not going to say any race so people don't get so sensitive and everything like that but there was er, immigrants that are like gathering in 10 12 of them and they tell the driver that is stopping because he has a time hey get inside we gotta go and they have knives and stuff like that and the driver is afraid that the police doesn't do anything and they harass they harass a lot of people so that's how the government is it's i i i, I important and, and let's say it it's in simple words italy is part of the new world order <laughs> but don't touch their food but don't, don't touch, touch their, their food, food. Yeah. They, they, they don't want gmos yeah, don't. they didn't want meats from the states because they're like, yeah, it's full of antibiotics and all that stuff. And people that try to go against these laws, they get fined really, really bad. And, and even 
prison. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, there's, there's yeah, they, you get time. shut down. You get a lease from a hundred to five hundred thousand euro uh, ticket. You go uh, in court and you can get arrested. And this is for like, let's say, uh, having cows that have like you're selling cows that have a broken leg or they're they have a, a cold or something. And you got to treat them. Yeah, with the and, antibiotics. yeah. So the, you you have to have. Uh, uh, cattle that is actually healthy mm -hmm. right? and that's the nice thing of Italy and the culture of food you don't you don't screw with our food right and then you know we can look at the statistics of the rates of disease over in Italy versus oh, what's happening here in the U.S. Yeah. allergies I mean the list goes on and on so I think it's you know I think that there that it's an important concept that we have to take into consideration well why is that so different well it seems to be that the food is the common link. We have it's, it's, the yeah. worst regulations here in the United yeah. States for protecting us mm -hmm. against ingredients that are going to harm our physical and this bodies. Goes, and not yeah. just our physical bodies, yeah. but our mental bodies. I, this goes hand in hand, like I wanted to say, with spirituality, yes. with our energies, because uh, you, we, we say in and Italy or the Jews even say that you are what you eat. Absolutely. You are and what your food eats. You, uh, or yeah. you are what you, you, you are, are what you what... eat. So if you are what you eat, you want to eat what is loving and that is healthy. And that animal, if you have to eat animals, you want to eat animals that are tame. You don't want to eat aggressive animals. First, because aggressive animals may eat humans. And do you want to eat an animal that potentially eight humans like a shark or a bear or stuff like right. that first no second you you are going to uh feed on their energy because mm -hmm. energy flows in their blood and stuff like that so do you well, we, we can actually take this to a science perspective oh, yeah, yeah. This and, is... and it boils down to cortisol yeah, right cortisol this is why and, the and jewish the the, you know in the jewish religion uh, you, you, kosher yeah it's... kosher is so important because you don't want an you don't want to consume an animal that just got traumatized food, any, any, food, like, any kind of food that was yeah. traumatized yeah. well we'll have to speak specifically to animals in this yeah. sense because i and don't we'll know. get it to veggies yeah. too like kosher just means the word kosher means it, it's okay it's it's okay to eat to ingest and why don't uh jews eat bears or anything that is like rolling in mud and stuff like that because you are what you eat do you want to eat uh, an animal that was, you know, because it's going against nature. Pigs in nature are really clean animals. But let's say, oh, Jews don't eat bacon, they don't eat pigs. Mm -hmm. Why? So the scientific reason is because pigs are in a small space now. They're raised in a small space and their nature is to pens. roll in mud. <laughs> Pig pens. Pigs, yeah. They, 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 in nature, they clean themselves rolling in mud. Well, if you put them in a room that doesn't have mud, where are they going to roll? They're going to roll their shit. shit. Yeah. So it's not their fault. It's because all of humans. So we don't eat that for that reason. And because uh, in the Torah and in the, in, the, in the original Bible, what, you know, what, what remains from it, whatever you want to call it, it's because uh, pigs, the taste of their meat is the same as humans. Oh. So God told us, Ooh. not to eat the pig because you don't want a human to like a meat that has the same taste as humans oh interesting yeah and i found that out a couple of years ago i was like oh i didn't know that oh it's like so pigs have the same taste as humans so hmm. knowing how a pig tastes is like you know how a human tastes like. wow exactly I, I think i think i might be and i'm mm. bursting a lot of bubbles <laughs> yeah. i think there's but, probably a lot of people being triggered yeah. right now go what the fuck? but that's the that's one of the reasons i was like hey and i, I ate salami and prosciutto and, <laughs> and, and, the and, and all those things you know growing up they, they, they shoved well, those things down my throat right and um that's one of those are the main reasons and that you know we that jews don't don't eat uh pork yeah let's call it and and let's go back. Do you want to eat an animal that's rolling its own shit? Right. No, well, I, don't. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Honestly, no. And the, the pork is one of the animals where it has like uh, parasites. Right. So you have to cook it really, really, really well. Yeah. And because if not, that's how well, you get all kinds of uh, parasites I mean, and all that stuff. We all have gut issues as it is. 70% of our immune system lies in the digestive tract. So, mm. you know, trying to take safety precautions any way we can is definitely relevant when it comes to our overall health and well-being. But I want to go back to um, animals that are being slaughtered, you know, and traumatized. 
they're releasing cortisol. And that cortisol is going into the tissue of the meat that ultimately we consume, not along with the antibiotics and the growth hormones and the other stuff in conventional farming. And so um, we know the majority, you know, here in the US, we, we have unrealistic expectations. We're so consumed with materialism and perfectionism. We're constantly under stress. And if we're taking in food items that are then further contributing mm -hmm. to that stress response in our own bodies and imbalancing those hormone levels, it's going to be problematic. It's going to wear down the mm -hmm. adrenal glands. It's going to decrease the immunity. It's going to um, impact our cognitive function, our mental Especially health, that. you know, our spirit, our like, spirit. Everything. That's like, like growing up, my grandma, this is in Italy. She always said, like, even if you're poor, whatever money you have, you want to invest it in the food you eat. Yeah, because that's the most important thing. You said you never want to eat cheap food. You always want to buy the best because guess what? What you're eating is going to become part of you. You're going to digest and that you're going to become that food. Yes. So if and let's put it down to this very simple. In this life experience, without your health, you cannot do anything. You cannot earn money. You cannot follow your passion. You cannot do good. You cannot do anything without health. And people and when I say people, I'm including there too. We lose. Uh, we lose like this view of it. I was like, oh, wait, I, but work, work, work. Right. Oh, money, well, money, money. Guess what? Well, let's, I mean, I sick. think we can take it to a vibrational state. Yeah, right? and that's so, what, it's all connected when I say kosher and the food and yeah. you are what you eat. It's basically, you want to eat the right stuff or the, the best for yourself. Because the most nourishing, nourishing food. And that was like cultivated in a, in loving, a loving and natural way mm -hmm. that can go from, animals to apples and this is like when i have discussions with vegans oh but kosher it's still killing the animals like yeah technically the real kosher method is like uh animal has to live his life fully and completely like he's in nature mm -hmm. and there's different techniques where you know when an animal doesn't know when to stop eating or not most of the time so they have ways of distracting the animal and bringing it back but the animal has to live but uh, perfect life like it would be in nature it doesn't have to be sick can have broken bones nothing it has to be perfectly healthy and when it's time you do a blessing uh and you think that you give you ask permission to source god whatever and you bless the uh soul of the animal that you're taking and you know you do it in a conscious way mm -hmm. you're not doing it because you can do it right so and then they use a special knife and they usually cut you know, they slip the road where they don't feel any pain and just fall asleep because you don't want to have that stress and that cortisol right. and you don't want to have to be kosher. You cannot eat. You're not allowed to eat anybody's blood. Mm. There's no blood. Mm. You cannot have it. And that's why it goes through a process of disinfecting with salt and water and salt. Mm -hmm. So that's why if you have to eat meat, kosher <sighs> is a really good so way. Yeah. And it's not, this is not about religion. I'm not a religious person, but you know, I'm, uh and th but people like well, when we go to this. restaurants we we offer we say prayers we yeah. we thank and that's we the thing if, the if food. You, yeah if you cannot get kosher for some reason because you live you know i lived in bring this area and the, to get kosher food when i want to be kosher at that i found out there was stores in rome that had to ship it to me and all that stuff but blessing the food is raising the energy and the particles and when mm -hmm. i say energy everything has atoms electrons protons and when you go to the really yeah. small level you go to the quark mm -hmm. and i bet there's something else that's even smaller that our technology is not able to see to identify, and yeah. so i call that that's the energy that's the particles that with our words as we speak that we're right. moving energy with their words mm -hmm. and we have to be conscious in how we speak and that's another episode right. that we can do oh about. definitely but you raise the vibration of your food and being kosher means even blessing uh an apple. Having offing the gratitude. Because yeah, you don't want to live this life going around destroying stuff. Like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm a human. I can pick that apple from that mm -hmm. tree because I can and well, I'm going to eat it. That's that entitlement attitude. Exactly. So I, you, I, you, you know, just because that me. apple can say, hey, who the heck are you? I was on my tree. I was, I was nice happy. and red. Right. I was, I was basking I was, in the sun. I was in the sun. That, the that apple has energy and you went and pick it. And guess what? You pick it because we need food. You know, we're not going to mm -hmm. survive on air. So you say a blessing 
for the fruit because you want to thank God that gave you the opportunity to pick that fruit. You have well, just the act of offering gratitude. Yeah, it, it it's, raises the vibration. Yeah. It lifts your spirit. It makes you grateful. It makes you appreciative. It makes you humble too, yeah. because like I'm taking I'm, this apple because I need it to keep my body alive. And by keeping my body alive, I want to spread the love and yes. light to other people. Yes. And to through the universe. That's a nice thing that people don't talk about in religions. The original Bible talks about the universe. Mm -hmm. That's not, it doesn't say that we're the only creation. We are one of the creations of God. And if you're religious or not, thinking that we're only the only ones in this universe right. is a little bit like mm, uh, naive. <laughs> naive. Denial. <laughs> or uh, I don't know, egotistic. Yeah. Like, I am the only one. Right. Uh, no, you're not. No, yeah. you're not. So well, so back to, you know, the thing about vibration, and this is going to lead us into another discussion that I want to talk to, and we'll probably wrap it up with this. But when we are vibrating in that lower frequency, when we're in those lower states, our bodies, our cells are literally craving the same vibrational frequency. So we are more prone to be called to the refined processed foods, the fast foods, the, yeah, the high sugar, yeah. you know, because the reality is that vibration is dead and this human is vibrating in a very dead place. Mm -hmm. That's why we're so fatigued. That's why it's so difficult for us to set goals and actually reach our goals. We really have to take into consideration how we're nourishing our body, how that nourishment is feeding our vibrational state that's going to support our ability to actually go after our goals and yeah. live our Going life purpose, life. Yeah. you know? Yeah. So I, I was having a conversation with a girlfriend the other day. She's a, another dietitian that I adore immensely. And we were talking and I was telling her about our plans, our group plans and where we're heading and the things that we're doing. And she says, you know, I just admire your ability to dream big. And I was like, it really struck me. I was like, wait, because it doesn't feel to me that I'm dreaming big. Like, well, it's, and then we were talking about this. It's because the system we grow up limits you and we're used to lack and limits and fear and everything. So when you dream, it's almost like, oh, I'm, I'm being crazy. I'm, I'm stupid to dream. Why? Right. It, it's like if, and anybody, every, anybody's dream is different than one another. Like I was listening to the radio the other day. This is just an example. And it touched me really a lot. And they said that the, this guy's passion was actually delivering pizza. And he said that he wants to do that for the rest of his life because bring like delivering pizza. He says, there's people that, you know, pizza brings happiness. To oh, hundred percent. He says there are people at home that maybe the only smile they see that day is mine and I'm delivering their food. Aww. And I want to be that person that delivers that pizza with a smile and care Aww. because maybe I'm the only person and I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. And guess what? He was content and he was happy and that was his passion and nobody should judge him about it. I was actually, he, is ha he reached happiness because it's not about money or anything. It's about that balance. Yeah. He was doing his job, earning his living. That is enough for him. And guess what? It was fulfilling his soul well, mission. He's, ultimately, he's thinking about the greater good. He's yeah, thinking about he the collective. Felt, he felt yeah. aligned with it. Yeah. He's like, that's what I love to do. So oh, when something that. is aligned with you, it's going to work. No matter what. Don't think of how and stuff like that. I know probably you guys heard this, but if something doesn't work out, it's not in alignment. Agreed. It's not your mission. Like, well, so don't force it. But mm -hmm. and, and then let's, you know, this and takes then, us back to that vibrational mm -hmm. state because when we're in those lower vibrational frequencies. The consciousness that we're operating from are typically victim mode and trying to control circumstances. Mm -hmm. And when we aren't able to control the circumstances, then we loop right back yeah, into victim mode. Yeah. And so we stay in that negative healing loop that's keeping us vibing in that lower vibrational frequency. Then we're craving the recreational drugs, the alcohol, the refined processed foods. That. You know, because ultimately we're seeking comfort. We know that something is missing from within and we're mm -hmm. trying to fill that void. Mm -hmm. And so I, I love that. I think that's such a great example. When my father, when my biological father passed away in 2009, I stood next to his casket and the amount of people that came up to me and said, whenever I think of your father, the thing that pops in my mind is his smile. 
he was always smiling. That was his life purpose. His life purpose mm -hmm. was to constantly have a smile and to have a friendly interaction of mm -hmm. love and light with every individual yeah. he came in contact with. And that was so impactful for me in that moment when I heard those words from all of those people over and over and over again, I thought, wow, what a legacy, what an amazing thing to be remembered by. It wasn't what he had. It wasn't, you know, the job that he worked. It was the oh, smile and the it. peace and joy that yeah. he brought to people when they encountered his presence. Mm -hmm. And this is oh. what we need to remember. We are here on a mission. Sometimes like somebody's, I was reading or hearing something was like, you know, when we feel bad for a homeless person, maybe their mission is to be homeless because they are going to roam the streets because their mission is to observe and mm -hmm. just look and observe and that's it. That's yeah. their mission. Right. And if they feel content with that, it's none of our business to interfere with that. Hey, you need help? No, I'm good. I'm mm -hmm. fine. I'm, I, this is my lifestyle. And then the judgment comes in. How can it be? Because, because the system taught us you have to grow up, go to school, get a degree, get a job, make money, buy a house, make children and die. Yep. God, no, nope. no, <laughs> yes. and never. If it makes you happy, Bless you, do it. Right. If it makes you happy, if it doesn't feel right, then drop that story, drop that limitation that they created in your right. mind and go and accomplish whatever you need to do. Because guess what? There's a lot of children out there. Everybody's making babies. There are houses that you can buy, but there's... Well, I ha you know, I have to give time. myself a little credit here as a mother because... I went against the grain and I took a lot of slack from it, from friends, family members, my elders. Um, when my children were growing up, uh, I had money that we were investing for their future. And we were being told by many that we needed to put it into a very specific college fund for them. And I resisted that. My intuition said, no, that's not the answer. And the way that I was able to, um, you know, understand this intuition that I was having is that we put this pressure on children that they have to follow these specific steps. But more often than less, when they follow these specific steps, it's for chasing the money, it's for the materialism. And then in the end, they sacrifice all of their own well being. They achieve all of the money, but they don't have the happiness. And so I decided that that's not what I was going to do with that money. I was going to invest it in another way. And I chose to invest it in a way that many told me I was absolutely crazy and insane for choosing the option that I did. But in the long run, it, it worked out very well in our favor. But back to this point, when my children were growing up, I used to tell them all the time. I don't want you to feel pressured that college has to be the answer for you. The reality is you never know, you know, you do life and as you're doing life, that's how you are being led to the different journey, to the different thing mm -hmm. that's going to fulfill your heart, bring you joy, bring you happiness, allow you to share your gifts. But we, we take that away when we put this pressure that you have to get the specific degree, you have to, you know, work this specific profession and then you get the money and then you have the thing it's when we ignore our intuition and then yeah because sometimes to, so, to listen to your intuition you have to do a leap of faith yeah and then there's the fear that kicks in it's like oh i don't want to leave my job because i don't have anything to yeah so i advise both of my daughters i said first find your passion what brings joy to you what makes you happy when you can identify those topics those things of interest then you can start pursuing something. And both of my girls, you know, they didn't go the traditional college route. Um, my youngest did for a while and she stepped away and decided that she was going to go out there and follow her passion. And they are both so happy. They're doing amazing. They, they have more opportunity and more potential than many people, many of their friends. And I, I'm so proud of them for listening and honoring that inner part of them that said, go for the joy, go for the happiness. And guess what? That's where they're finding the money. Yeah. And, and talking about college, if there's like majority of your passions, you can learn on YouTube. <laughs> True. Like I, I, it's well, a, but then again, I think this goes back to that all knowing, yeah, right? Yeah. Like we already like have Like if you want to become a, a doctor or something, yeah. okay, go to college, learn it. Yeah. But it's like, for example, I, I didn't even know when I was growing up that there was like social media marketing in the college. I, that didn't exist. Uh -huh. And 
we, that, that's one of uh, the business that we have with Alyssa and I. And, you know, I was like, wait, what? They have it in college now? I have to learn that on my own. Yeah. Thanks to Alyssa that did it for seven years. And I was like, <laughs> what? Like, even psychology was hard back in my days. Mm-hmm. Like, only two universities in Italy had it. And I was wow. like, super hard to get in with the test. And now there's like this psychology and that psychology. And they're, and they're making, they, the other thing was like travel industry, like, and mm-hmm. the college. Oh, like hospitality. Yeah. Hospita- like, yeah. I was like, what? My dad, you know, built he's that been up. doing hospitality yeah. his whole like, life. Right? Whole life. I, I knew it because I grew up and I was like, why do you study this in school? Right. I was like, no. Well, you, you know, funny enough, as a registered dietitian, one of the domains that we have to study is food service, which is part of hospitality. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, there is a very specific formula for hospitality, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> oh, no, I believe it. <laughs> and it's like, oh, they have everything that can, and you need a degree for everything. Yeah. Really think the thing that So we need more debt. (laughs) We need more debt. You you just need experience. That's what people need because I see it in the working world. If you have experience, it's valued more than a degree. Absolutely. And if somebody's it really needs a degree and they don't value for what you're worth and what your experience, you don't want to work for them. Yeah. Go and do your own thing. Well, I feel so blessed that I was able to follow my passion and and go the route of learning holistic lifestyle practices and being able to share those holistic lifestyle practices with others so that they can start living their greatest good, the best quality of life possible so that they can chase their dreams. And that's something that we're all very much Mm -hmm. dedicated to. You know, I I love the fact, I love sharing with people that now in this present day, I have bought 27 quality years on my life from that day that I was 18 years old and told that I was looking at five years before I was going to need dialysis or transplant. Did you ever get it? Never. I mean, literally, I've never been on any medications. My doctor, I just went and saw a nephrologist just to have a checkup and she couldn't believe it. She's like, wait, you have IgA nephropathy. You're not on any meds. You don't have diabetes. She was like, where are your cards? Do you know how many client or how many patients need you? She was just absolutely astonished. She could not She was believe. one of the people that appreciated it because guess what? The people that are supporting this system, they're going to say, oh, there's no proof. It's not medically right. and blah, blah, blah. And they'll find some excuses you know, because they teach you to follow I, the experts. Quote, quote. Right. Who are the experts? Who ask that question? Who are they? Right. Who's the FDA? Who's doing these rules? Who these same experts are letting you uh, consume toxins? Yes, they're getting you in that state. Well, and the state. thing that pisses me off when I have conversations with people about this because they're like, "Well, go look at the research." Well, guess what? Why don't you who's look at in, who yeah. is funding the research? Who is funding the university that is producing Mm -hmm. the research? It's very much intercorrelated. And we've got to think outside the box. We've got to start using discernment when we're looking at these so-called recommendations for our health and wellness. And one, like when we talk about research, a good example is, I remember the story you told me about eggs. Oh, yeah. I asked her, I was like, okay, are eggs really bad for your cholesterol and stuff like that? And you told me that you actually did the research on your own and it came out. Well, actually when I was going through my grad program, I did. So I've been obsessed with eggs my whole life. I love Mm -hmm. eggs and eggs were villainized. Eggs were like one of those. No, no, we have very, very strict more than two a week. Yeah, We have very strict recommendations on the consumption of egg. And again, there was this knowing within me that said, "Mm, that feels like bullshit. And so I tried to follow a plant-based diet for a while and I ended up becoming very ill. As with this IgA nephropathy that I have, my body can't differentiate between the proteins that my, the proteins that I take in through my diet that are filtering through the nephrons in my kidney that would normally recycle those proteins my immune system starts attacking those dietary proteins, therefore attacking the proteins that the actual nephron tubes are made of. It can't differentiate. My body is eating itself. And as a result of that, I lose protein in my urine. I'm not recycling that that protein, those amino acids that help to build and repair tissue. And so for me, when I was following this plant-based diet, I got really sick and I was really like defeated because I'm like, I'm following the healthiest diet on the earth. Like what is wrong with me? Why am I not getting better? 
And ultimately for my body, I need the dietary protein through complete sources, which are animal sources. We get all 20 of our amino acids from animal sources. And so eggs and fish were two of the most vital components for me to add back into my diet that worked really, really well for my body. So my dad has history of cardiovascular disease and he went to his doctor and he's talking, you know, the doctor's like, you're, he's on medications and they're saying, you know, your cholesterol, we still need to get this down. No eggs. You can't have any eggs. And it infuriated me. And so I said, fine, I'm going to, I'm going to show you the research. So I chose to go and draw all my blood labs, measure my baseline metrics. And then for six months, I ate anywhere from two to five eggs every single day, <laughs> every single day. And at the, oh, and during this time, I was losing weight. I was building lean muscle. Like I, I was like, man, I feel so amazing. So six months later, I draw the labs to see the impact that consuming eggs every day, what it had done to me. And it was astonishing. My fasting glucose levels were lower. My triglycerides were lower. My LDL cholesterol was lower. My total cholesterol was lower and my good cholesterol increased. I had improved all of those metrics, which are the root for cardiovascular disease, as well as type two diabetes. I had improved all of those metrics. And the only thing that I did different was focused on consuming eggs nice. every single day. But back to when I was in uh, grad school, I devoted an entire semester to researching eggs. I really wanted to know the truth. I really, and it was hard because again, we have to look at mm -hmm. who is funding exactly. the research article. So I had to be dependent on um, retrieving a lot of the evidence from outside of the United mm -hmm. States because in the 1960s, when our government decided that we were going to make fat the villain for cardiovascular disease, as well as, you know, the increasing risk of developing type 2 diabetes, we chose fat here in the US and over in the UK, they chose sugar. So they made regulations around limitations on how much sugar should be consumed. And here in the US, we made regulations on how much fat should be consumed. And as a result of that, we have not now, sugar, right? no, not sugar. Yes, sugar why? was, yes, why? why? Tell me. Uh, you know. No, I know, I know. <laughs> it's super addictive. It's a, it's a, yeah. So I work with substance recovery and mental health. And one of the things that I educate on are the three substance substitutes, the three things that in our that we do that trigger the same addictive process or the same addiction process in the brain as utilizing alcohol or a you know recreational drug. And those three substances are, are you ready? Go for it. Can you guess them? Uh, probably I'll let you say it though. I guess one. Okay, so sugar. sugar, we know sugar is one of them. What are the other two? Addictive, well, most people have it every single day. Uh, Start their day. Coffee. Coffee. Uh, caffeine. So caffeine. caffeine. Caffeine is the second one. And then the third one is nicotine. These are the three substance substitutes that are heavily used and by most people. So if we really want to look at the population of a whole as a whole, most people are addicted. Their brain is being derived mm -hmm. from one it's of these specific substances. Domesticated. Yeah. And if you think about it, how the propaganda works with the experts, yeah. quote unquote, look at the commercials of cigarettes in the 50s. Who were advertising? The doctors, even your doctors. Yes. Yeah. Camel. Right. I'm like, what <laughs> the fuck? Right. Well, it's funny what? because having so, experience in the clinical world, 
when I would go and take a break or if I needed a nurse or I needed a doctor and they were on break, yeah, you could always find them in the smoking lounge. Everybody was out there pumping up their cigarettes, pounding down their caffeine and then eating their their candy bar, you know? So think about it. You know, it's it's in front of us. We just have to be aware of it. Right. That's it. Absolutely. It can be a little bit disturbing in the beginning because you feel screwed over and that's normal. But once you get over it, you get, okay, let's do it. Let's change it. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that change will only come from us. A hundred percent. If I decide, Heather and you guys, we can all change. Only from, no, we can't rely on anybody except ourselves. That's right. That's it. Yeah, I was having a conversation and we're going to wrap this up because we've been on for a while, but I was having a conversation this week with a group of people and they were saying, you know, well, it, it costs so much money to eat healthy. And the reality is yes and no. You can eat healthy on a minimal budget. I typically spend, you know, less than $100 for a household of three a week to eat healthy. Um, But if we choose to take responsibility and accountability for our own consuming actions, we have the ability to create change. We have the ability, you know, one thing that people don't realize and understand is that when it comes to organic farming, organic farmers are not getting any kind of federal money. There is no monetary incentive incentive for them to farm organically. They actually have to pay money to be able to farm organically. So if we could, as a whole, as a collective, start changing the way that we're consuming and purchasing products, then we can create the demand that will actually drive the costs down Mm -hmm. and allow for these products to be more affordable. And support the farmers. Support the farmers, but then most importantly, drive out these ingredients that are literally Mm -hmm. poisoning us. If we don't buy them. Then, then what? They're yeah. going to have to farm they, the land some other way. Everything depends on us. Yes. It goes back to that. If you don't buy it, who's going to buy it? Your exactly. Dog, your yeah. Cat? No, nobody's exactly. going to stay there. So. Yeah. Well, and it pisses me off when I hear people say, well, I'm just one person. What can I do? That's how it starts. Oh, mothers. Because if you do the same thing and one person and then the other person does and then the other person does it, that's how you create a whole. Yes. That's, that's, that's how, how we change. That's how your body is formed. It's a what there's one cells. cell yeah if yeah. you go and you know uh, what is the what a cell? great analogy and what is the cell formed with you know uh, other little smaller particles you know you go back to the quark that is in your skin right now right i mean that's how it oh, all i love works. that analogy it all starts with one cell one, and that one cell yeah. becomes the universe, this trillion right? yeah. celled human body so yes it starts with you you have the power to help create the change yeah. so well, guys, I really appreciate you hanging in there with us today. Um, Dario, thank you so much for being on. It was such a pleasure. This is me. so enjoyable, and I would love to do more of these. So this is something that Dario and I are going to be joining forces and doing more of. So for all the audience listeners, if there's anything specific that mm-hmm. you want to learn more about or hear let more about, know. let us know. Yeah, if, you, if it's religion, spirituality, food, uh, even our retreats. Yeah, retreats. Our healing uh, ceremonies. Yeah, if you need, if there's any blocks you want to, you know, get over with, you know, your life, music, music, you know, music all of it. Even yeah. movement, even your movement, like, yeah. physical body. If you need uh, help with, uh, Alyssa you know, does this this booty, booty yoga. yoga. She's a yoga instructor and she does booty yoga. And if you're a guy and you need help with, you know, going to the gym or stuff like that, we, we, we have it all. It's all we under do. one house. Yes. And that's the nice it's thing. It's the yeah. one-stop shop for exactly. all the life skills, all of the holistic life skills you need so that you can start living your life purpose. Reconnecting it with your true self, with yep. your full potential that you are and taking back your, you know, your power. Yeah, well, exactly. I love you, friend. Thank you love so you much. Too. All right, guys. Yeah. You can find Dario. Where can they find you? Uh, it can be Instagram on Dario. And Dario is like Mario, but with a D. <laughs> Dario Russell with two S and two L's, G. And then where can they find your marketing? Uh, it, uh, my marketing is uh, The Bomb Media. So it's D-A-V-O-M, double B, Bomb Media on Instagram. Or uh, it's thebomb.com. 
Awesome. And we'll make sure that we link his music page and all of the other sources that are available so you can connect with Dario in the show notes. All right, guys, have an amazing day. Go out there and give lots of love and shine your light as bright as you can. Yeah, you'll be all blessed. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on the Think Yourself Healthy podcast. Make sure you leave a review and let me know what you think. I love reading your feedback. Come hang out with me on Instagram at Heather Duranja. And don't forget to take a screenshot that you're listening to the podcast and tag me. I love to share it. See you on the next episode.